Tonight to Psalm chapter 84. Psalm chapter 84. God's blessing on His church. God's blessing on His church. That's what I'm going to preach on tonight. Beginning of verse 1, he says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. If we had this spirit in the church today, every church would be packed in the world. This is what Jesus talked about when he said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is where we're filled. This is what church is for. Church is for us to come, to be filled up, to go out and give out when we're outside these four walls. And so what a blessing to know the Lord. Look at verse 3. This is interesting. We know that the Bible tells us that God takes care of the sparrow, but listen to David as he writes uh, here. He says, Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. God gives space to the birds. It's, isn't it terrible, though, that birds sometimes are more faithful than God's people? Amen. That's why it's there. Number four, verse four. This is where we're going to start tonight. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Now look at this. They will, they will be still praising thee. I love tonight. And I, I love your testimony. It is special to have a church family like we have. How many of you are from Washington? Raise your hand. Just look. Few. How many are from outside of Washington? Raise your hand. Look at that. So how many, how many have any family at all that live here in Washington? Okay. There's a little bit more there. Now let me ask this. How many of you have safe family that live in Washington? A little less. So the, the, the idea, the thought here, is that there's something special about the house of God. And the purpose of us coming is for God to work in our hearts so that when we walk out these doors, we're praising God, okay? And we'll still be praising God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Church is when we start the week. This, Sunday's not the week end. Sunday's the week beginning. And that's the mentality that we, we as God's people should have as we, as we move forward, that God's house is a priority. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. And so that, you know, people say, well, they live down at the church. As though that's a bad thing. The sparrows lived every day at the church. Okay? And, and I'm not saying that we, we don't have a life and that there isn't life and work and all the things that go with it. But what I'm saying is... This is a blessing, and we often take it for granted. We have what nobody out there has. Most of the praise of God is in the house of God. And let me say that again. Most of the praise to God is in the house of God. Why? Because you know that you're squelched from doing it at work. It's just not the atmosphere. <laughs> you, you're, you're listening to all kinds of crazy stuff. Language that you wouldn't repeat in front of your church family. Um, discussions about things that are non-eternal don't matter. And so what, what a, a refreshing thing it is and something that we should look forward to every week that this is where I can 
can be blessed of God and I can hear from the Word of God, but I can, I can be moved to praise God more and more and more. Blessed are they, he says in verse number 4, that dwell in thy house. They will still, or will be still praising thee. Now look at, look at what he writes in verse number 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. So let's, let's flip the mentality. Ugh, church? Church again? One service, according to this songwriter, is a thousand times better than any day. One day, another one day is better than a thousand days of life, is what he's saying. Outside the house of God. That's how we should look at church. That church is something special. That's something that our kids should feel from us. That's something that our friends, that's something our family, that's something that everybody should feel from us and that we should be praising the Lord. You know, it's, it's, it should be a, a, a normal thing for us to be able to say to people that wondered what we did on Sunday, I got to go to church. And by the way, it was wonderful. That's a good thing. Because... People look at you like, church? You went to church? Why? Well, if you knew my church, you know why, okay? That's the, that's the, the idea he's conveying here. First, he says it's a blessing to dwell in the house of God. But second, he says, blessed is the man whose strength is in me. Now, we know that we... We're moved to praise the Lord when we come here. But one of the other benefits of being in the Lord's house is the strength that we draw for, from the Lord and often through His people. Because, and he, he elaborates, he says, Blessed is the man whose strength is, is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, that's, a, that's a, a very bitter valley, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Now look at verse 7. This is, this is the wonder of what God does through the fellowship, through the services, through being in the house of the Lord, through being around God's people. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Because we, God gives us strength as we need it. We are weak, and when we're weak, we're strong because we're strong because of the strength that he gives. We go from strength to strength. And, and it, it rotates. One family is going through a difficult time. God gives them strength. Then another family needs strength, and so that family can help encourage and say, you know, I went through something similar, or I don't understand, but you know, when I was going through a valley, God did this for me. That encouragement, that, that breathing of, of encouragement strengthens us as believers. We don't know week to week what is going to happen in this church. We have no idea the heartache, the brokenness, the difficulties, the burdens, the pains, the sufferings, the sickness, the disease. We don't know. But He does every day. And so the wonder of God is He's provided us a house to come to that we can praise Him. And He's provided us a place that we can come and we can draw strength. 
so that when we have the valley of Baca that we're going through, that we can have strength and go from strength to strength. The next thing he says in this text is found in verse number 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Trust is very close to faith. In fact, the, the terms are basically synonymous. How do we learn to trust biblically? Think of a verse. How is faith instilled in a believer? Pardon? Okay. There you go. Okay. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the... And what is done in the house of God? The teaching and preaching of God's Word. And that's what people don't get. You're not going to get it anywhere else. This is where this is the this is where God has set it up. And so the wonder of the house of God. Now think about those that were were in Israel. Most of them went to the temple to hear the reading. But the luxury that they had was not that they necessarily had this at home. They would listen to the rabbis, they would listen to the scribes, they would listen to uh, those who were given the responsibility to teach it. They would listen to Jesus, they would listen to men who would stand and would read the scriptures. And so we have the luxury beyond this to have a Bible in our hands, ourselves. And what a blessing it is to be able to come and hear God's Word. He writes in verse 10, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And then he writes this. He says, I would rather be a doorkeeper. Al, Bill, there you go. Uh, for years, these two men have been, you know, they, 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 they hand out the bulletins, they, they stand at the door, they greet the guests, and, and that, to some, is a menial thing. But that's the first line of defense in the ministry, our first, first line of offense, if you will, in the ministry, because what people feel when they first are greeted when they come to that, that door, and I know Al's kind of scary looking, but... But when, that, but when they, you, they first come in that door and they are greeted and they are welcomed, that's a big deal. It's a big, big deal. And David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So we can draw the conclusion there that David probably knew several believers who were not really feeling the same way and were living a life outside of God's will and not doing what God wanted them to do. What a privilege it is to be a part of the work of God. Verse 11, For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Look at this. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's what we learn in the house of God. That's why we're here. Because this, during the preaching, Hearing the teaching and being around God's people makes us better. 
if we didn't feel like that there was some reason to be improved, and the Bible teaches us very, very clearly that we are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And part of growth is change. Part of growth is God molding us and fashioning us into the image of His Son. We will never be at that image until He comes, until we see Him. And so every service, there's always room for improvement from the pastor throughout the congregation, all of us. You know, I, I, I mean this sincerely. The more I preach, the more I prepare, the more I enjoy preaching because it's, it's not just you that, is, that, that are, are being moved by this, but it's me that is hearing the voice of God that is being moved first because if God doesn't move me, it isn't going to move you because it's going to be dead and dry and boring and, and, and a waste of time. I love being here. I mean that. I love being here. And I love every new, every new person and every new family, every new boy and girl, every new, every new teenager, every, every new college student, every new family that comes. I love it. I do everything I can to try to get to them. What blesses me is I can't all the time. But there's not a visitor that comes here that isn't, uh, isn't at least caught by three or four or five or six or, or, or ten people. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And so, <clears throat> going back, let's review and then we'll close. He says, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. We don't know how much we're blessed. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Sometimes we don't understand that statement until we go through the valley of Baca. And then we know. And then he says, O Lord, blessed is the man that trusted in thee. Faith. Learning faith. It's over time. Trust takes time. From the moment that we trusted Jesus, and if we go back and we look over our life, over all these years, I've been saved 41 this December, how many have been saved 30, 30 years or more? Raise your hand. 20. 10. 5. 1. There you go. See? It's all across the board. We wouldn't expect of Reagan to have knowledge and to have understanding of God's strength of somebody who's been walking with the Lord 30, 40 years. But every one of us, in some measure or another, learn trust, learn what His strength can do, and learn the value of the house of God. God's blessing on His church. He blesses us more than we can even understand. And so I hope tonight that that will encourage you to, to make God's house something special. That it's special to your kids. Because it's special to you. It's special to all of us. Because He's special. Now, I mentioned the tragedy this, this week. I didn't go into the names, and some of you probably know. I don't want our church to ever be caught up in a man. You know, I, I, I am thankful for the compliments, and I'm thankful for the kind words 
about the messages. And I'm not speaking in platitudes tonight, and I'm, I'm not trying to be over humble, but I want to tell you this. This is a sacred trust, opening this book. And it's never about me. If the only reason you're in this church is because of me, you're here for the wrong reason. The reason that we're here is because of Jesus. And it's because of His Word. And it's because of what we all believe in relation to doctrine with this book. That's why I'm here. That's why, God, hopefully, God willing, you're here. Is be Because if it's not about this book, it's not about the Son of God, if it's not about the Father, and it's not about the Holy Spirit, and it's not about how we can be like Him, then we are playing church. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of churches become. This is not serious. And sometimes never cracked or open. And the moving of the Spirit of God, you wouldn't hear the Spirit of God, you wouldn't know the Spirit of God if it hit you in the face in those churches. God moves through this. No man cometh un, unto me except my Father which hath sent me draw him. And God draws us through the book, his word. And so I'm thankful for the blessing of God's church here. Never forget the importance of the house of God. Never forget the importance of his strength. And never forget the importance of trusting him. We're going to sing as an invitation tonight. Um, Remembered everything I come out. Um, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It's one, it's one of my favorite songs. I can't even remember it. Okay, so Brian, come on up front, and and I want you to stand. And